Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So we got a bunch of stuff on the bench here. What are we doing? So a couple of weeks ago, we took a look at one of those uh, laser cutter engravers that are all the rage now. And I wasn't even sure I was gonna keep it at the time, but I ended up being really impressed with being able to, you know, cut thin wood and engrave on it and, you know, do all sorts of marking on metal, including stainless steel, which was my favorite. You can actually get all sorts of colors by causing an oxidation layer on stainless steel with a diode laser. It's pretty cool. If you didn't see that video, uh, I'll link it down in the description below. Go check that out. And when I took a look at that machine, I said, you're going to see it on the channel again at some point because uh, I think I want to build an enclosure for it. And that came because using that machine here, even in the shop where I can open up all the doors in this garage, it's just not really practical because it's not like you may be where you cut a piece of wood and it burns a little bit and you have like a slight smell of wood burning. No, when you're engraving wood, it's like imagine having a small campfire in your garage and marking metal. There's also some smells along with that, which means there's something in the air and I probably shouldn't be breathing it. So... What I want to take a look at today is coming up with a way to get the exhaust gases from a laser unit out of my shop or out of my basement, actually, specifically, because I don't want that machine to really live here in my garage. I'd much rather it live in my basement where all my 3D printers are um, set up. It's a much cleaner environment, but I don't want that air down in my basement either. So let's take a look at what I have here. All right, the first thing I picked up is this enclosed fan unit. The idea is to be able to push or pull air through, you know, some duct or hose uh, with this unit. And I think this is gonna fit the build. Let's get this out of the box and take a better look at it. All right, so this is a four inch inline fan and I noticed the CFM's not listed on the label, but it was listed on the Amazon listing when I purchased this and it seemed to be in the range of what we would want for this project. Anything you see here that I show you in today's video, I'll make sure I link down in the description in case you wanna pick it up for your project. And I see we got a nice big beefy impeller in there. That should work well. All right, next thing is I got two packages of this four inch Armor Flex uh, hose and this is I think it's aluminum with like a steel ring in it looks like it's a little deformed on this end and shipping hopefully that yeah it bends back pretty easy and we'll have to get a measurement of this as well just to see if this is really four inch because I mentioned we're going to need to design some adapters for this uh, I got two of these I'm not sure I need them both we're going to have to adapt on to some existing four inch um, hose or duct as well and that'll make more sense when I show you down in the basement. And I want to adapt to this size uh, hose ultimately as well. So, all right, let's go down in my basement and I'll show you where I'm trying to hook this stuff up to and kind of what I'm thinking so far. There we go. I just noticed on the side of the box it actually lists 195 uh, CFM out of this. All right, apologies for the poor lighting and video quality here. I'm standing on a workbench down in my basement, so you just have to forgive me. But this is an existing inlet that comes into the basement. You can see it's similar to a dryer vent. In fact, it might even be a, you know, one of those dryer vents that goes through the side of your house. Um, and it's got a grate on it. And I said this was an air intake. Originally, air came in. Uh, this was just duct taped, literally duct taped onto, uh, onto this. And this ran over to a wood stove that is no longer in use and if we ever have a functioning wood stove again um, I won't be using this because it was so poorly installed uh, the the tremendous amount of air was just leaking in over in this area and I thought it was where this guy actually penetrated to the exterior of the house but it's not there's just a ton of air coming through this because they had no uh, they had like no one-way valve on this I've actually picked one of those up too let me grab it yeah, this is what I'm talking about. One of these should have always been installed here. This has just a spring on it so that these two flappers here can open when air is pushing through in this direction, uh, but they won't allow air to flow back uh, in the other direction. So I'm going to add one of these. I'm also going to do a much better job of actually taping this up. In fact, even if just as is, if I slide this guy on here... Yeah, the amount of air that's coming in here now is pretty much uh, nothing. But this stuff here is why I wanted to work originally with 4-inch, because I already had, I knew I had this, what was previously an inlet here, that we're now going to use as an outlet. So this is positioned now so that uh, air can't come in, but air going out will go through there no problem. I'm going to reuse some of this stuff. It runs across the ceiling here. 
and is also very poorly duct taped together there. I also don't know how flexible this is, but I've got those two new packages of stuff. And I'm thinking that we actually mount the fan up here as well. We've got room in sort of this cavity. I doubt we're going to just happen to line up with, if we hard mount it against there with that mounting flange sitting where we need it. But let me grab the fan. Let's see where that lands. All right, I really need a third hand, but I'm gonna try and make do here. So uh, showing us the airflow is going in that direction. We want the air to be going out. So let's see if I can get this guy on there. Yeah, that slips in. Yeah, so you can see where our mounting flange is. We're nowhere near uh, the joist, and I think we're sitting. There we go, I got the camera jammed up here. So the mounting flange is actually below the joist and we're a good distance away from it. But I think we can design a piece that adapts from the face of our joist here to the mounting flange on the fan. So we'll need that. We'll need, um, we'll need a couple couplers in the same like size here as this four inch. We'll need an adapter to go from the four inch to the smaller size. And we might need either like a giant ball valve or some blast gates as well to limit the amount of air. I'm also thinking we're also, I'm standing on the workbench here that I do my soldering on. So I kind of wouldn't mind dropping another one down to here as, a, as a, like a fume extractor uh, for when I'm soldering. There's a better view of this. You can see this is where my soldering equipment is set up and I have one of these smoke absorber things here now. I don't think that does. You know what? It helps a little bit. At least it keeps the smoke from just going right up into my face, but I don't think it actually does anything to make the smoke any safer for this space. So yeah, I wouldn't mind. And we might not try and tackle that today, but I wouldn't mind having a second, uh, a second duct drop down to use for uh, fume extraction here. Okay, so I'm gonna get the measurements that we need to adapt from that joist face to our mounting flange on that fan. We'll get our other coupler pieces designed and I'll bring you guys back. All right, I wasn't gonna shoot any video of this, uh, but you guys have to see this. So this was duct taped up before. Uh, I panned over and showed this just briefly. This is how they connected these two. There's no coupler. They just kind of collapsed that and shoved it in there and then poorly taped it together with some duct tape. This is why I end up doing so much of my own work instead of having people do it. Like, come on guys, really? All right, and here are the designs that I came up with for this. So we'll start here with the fan mount. So again, this is just designed to get that fan mounted against that joist and the flange for the fan actually sits below the joist, hence why the bottom section here is narrower. If I got the design right, this face here should be basically flush with the bottom edge of the joist, but this extends out far enough to hit that edge uh, to mount against the flange for the fan mount. Uh, we've got four holes down here for uh, sheetrock screws or just all purpose screws. Two inch screws should be long enough for this and I countersunk the faces just so we don't see those screw heads above the surface. Now, the fan is actually gonna mount to this with machine screws, uh, socket cap machine screws. These are sized for M4 and basically these holes are zero clearance. The dimensions of the counter bore here as well as the through bore are exactly the same as the dimensions of those screws so that hopefully I can just press them into place and I'll have sort of the threaded part of them sticking out so that I can screw this onto the joist and then those threads will be sticking out for me to just position the fan up against this because it's gonna be really hard uh, to get those fasteners on there if I'm trying to hold the fan at the same time. So my thought is by having the threads you know, sticking out, I can get the fan up in place and it'll more or less stay in place by itself while I turn on the washers and uh, nuts for that. The coupler, I actually sized based on the dimensions of that one-way uh, draft stopper. Uh, the outside diameter of the top section and the bottom section and the dimension of like sort of the center ring part here just to, as it, that works as a stop uh, are identical to that piece. And I had test fit that piece in the, the duct so I know that should work. And then our adapter piece, the OD of this is sized the same as our coupler piece. And this section here is actually tapered a bit uh, for that smaller hose uh, to couple onto this. And the inside of this, it's actually the small size all the way through up into the top uh, right up here. And I did that for two reasons. Uh, number one, to make this guy really easy to print because if I print, uh, let's see, this face down. It's kind of confusing because it's highlighted this whole thing, but just this outer ring here, if I print that face down on the bed, 
everything else should print with no supports the way I designed this. And you know, it doesn't really matter whether we are reducing at this point up here or reducing down here in the center of the coupler, which would be, you know, probably what you'd expect to see, but this should work fine. So, all right, let's get these printed out and see how stuff fits. All right, all of our pieces are done. I actually made two of these couplers. I printed one of these on the Neptune 4 Max and I printed one on my ancient Anet A8. The, the one on the Neptune 4 Max definitely looks better, uh, but the Anet did a perfectly fine job with this one. I'm not even sure I needed to. I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna make an extra. That machine's not doing anything. Here is our adapter to hopefully go from the four inch down to the smaller size. And I brought everything out back out here to test. So let's see if this fits. Yeah, if anything, that's a little loose in there, but that's fine. This might actually shrink a little bit as we as we open it up. Uh, and we're gonna put a clamp over that anyway. Let's see if this goes on to this end. Yep, that's a good fit on there. So you know we can adapt between these two sizes now. And last but not least, we have our mounting plate here or our mounting adapter for this fan. And it's not as obvious here on the bench how this is gonna to fit together, but hopefully this should bridge the gap between where the mounting flange was and where we need to mount to that joist. And before we go back down to the basement, I think I'm gonna press in the, the, uh, the socket head machine screws. Uh, again, the way that this is hopefully gonna work is we're gonna have four all-purpose screws going from this side uh, so this will be mounted against the joist. And then I guess these will still be somewhat accessible. I probably could get an Allen key on them. It just wouldn't be very convenient uh, because I'm hoping to just press in a machine screw, have sort of just the, the end of the screw sticking out so that we can, when we put this in, we'll just key this right up on those bolts and then just put some, uh, put a washer and a nut, just even hand tight. Uh, to hold this guy in place. So, all right, let me get all this back down into the basement and I'll try and get the camera set back up so you guys can kind of see what's going on and let's see if this stuff fits. All right, guys, that went together pretty well. It was a little bit tricky to get the fan both on that pipe and over those studs at the same time. That's not something I had considered when I designed that, but there was fortunately enough flex to get it in place and it is really uh, sturdily mounted on there. That's not going anywhere. I uh, came down and then just zip tied it to my drain pipe here temporarily and just routed it down. Had the camera rolling, I don't know if it picked it up or not, but I tested our coupler here with two clamps, our, our reducer here, and I can feel a good amount of air being drawn into this pipe. So I think we are at the point where we need to actually start thinking about how we enclose the laser. And I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of 3D printed parts for that as well. At a minimum, we're gonna need some sort of flange uh, for this to go on, and we'll probably need some other stuff as well. So I think that's it for this week. Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out with me for this week's design and prints. And if you got anything out of this video at all, if you enjoyed it, or if it gave you any design ideas, take a second, 
hit that like button. It costs you nothing, really helps out the channel. And if this is by chance your first time here on the channel, we do a new functional print every single week. So if you're into that sort of thing, check out some of my other videos. And if you like them, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.